time. I like to be Mega Potter too. First and foremost, probably the biggest barrier to people throwing on the wheel, I would say 60% of why people give up, is centering. Because obviously if you're doing something symmetrical as it spins around, it's gotta not wobble, right? It's gotta be even. And so the whole point is when you first start, you have to make this perfectly, perfectly centered mound so that way every action you do after that fits the symmetry as it spins. In the very beginning, whatever your dominant hand is, whatever hand you feel like you're the strongest in, or at least the most precise that doesn't wobble, that can hold its shape really well, that's generally the hand that you want to favor. You always want the clay to go from heel to fingers. So for me, I'm right-handed. I want this to spin this way. The clay will go like this. There's a button on the side if you flip it, and you're left-handed, it'll fix it for you. It'll go the way you need it to. It's really hard to throw, almost impossible, if you're throwing where the clay is going into your fingers. You'll jab it, you'll make some mistake. It's, don't do it, don't do it. So always make sure you're going the handedness that you need to go. First and foremost, you gotta get it centered on the wheel. And ideally, you gotta wedge it, and you can probably learn, you've already seen wedging and stuff like that too. Um, this is tricky. Who here's ever arm wrestled before? Raise your hand if you've ever arm wrestled somebody. Oh, really? Come on, you've seen arm wrestling, right? You've seen arm wrestling. You ever see that part where like, nobody's winning and they're like, they're in this deadlock and like, you're, you're just trying to hold your arm so that way like, the person doesn't win but you're not really in a spot where you can like, just force your arm and, and beat them with it? Think of when you're throwing, when you're centering, specifically this part, the idea of not being able to push but the idea of being able to really strongly hold your position. Like when you like do like a fake flex, like you're holding your arm like this, you're doing that to your body. You need to be able to position yourself to like exert that don't move kind of force as you make the clay do what it needs to do. Right now, if we watch it, we see it wobbles, right? It's very uneven. What happens do you think if I keep my hand steady, stop the wobbling from happening, where do you think the clay is gonna go? It's not gonna to go to the side because it's coming around, right? It's pushing against my hand. But what's left unopened? Where, where, where my, where's my hand not at? Right here. So my top's gonna to get uneven. I can make this perfectly smooth, but now my top's gonna to be all like this. That's where the other hand comes in. That's where this hand goes over the top. I keep it even on top, I keep it even on the side. And if I'm able to do it, so you see something always like this. Also, I would say don't ever do this at like max speed. There's almost nothing that you're gonna do on this wheel all the way down, cut it in the middle. For the most part, it's probably like halfway or less. And it's got nice, fine control. Some people also keep their foot on the pedal like they're driving a car, and like they do this while they're throwing. That is like a number one no-no. Set it, leave it alone, take your foot off. You need it to go faster, make it go faster. Take your foot off. Don't ride the pedal or you will be very unhappy with how that goes. All right. Get your hands wet. Get the clay wet. And of course, ideally, I try to put it in the middle as much as I can because I don't want to, you know, crazy try to fight it. Set a speed that I like. Now you'll notice, for me, I have a hard time throwing standing up. I almost have to always be sitting down because I use the back of my elbow against my leg. I use my elbow over here against this leg. I use my whole body to brace myself, to kind of create that strong strength to grip it and to hold it steady. So you can see I've kind of got this a little more straighter, but now my top's uneven. So now we're gonna apply both pressures. into their hand, instead of just trying to manipulate the block, they'll make like a really tall, like almost like a unicorn horn, and then push the horn back into their hand. Some people have a lot more luck, 
centering. They're trying to just fight like a big heavy ball of clay. So I know this is not even in a wobble, but if I put my hand down sturdy and I push this whole lump of clay down into my hand that's sturdy, Good to have something with a corner so when you're done you can cut out the excess at the very base that's touching the plastic because it's really hard to cut things off if it has this beautiful taper because you might cut off and it doesn't look right so this lets you trim that and then of course it's always good to have just a cut off tool again especially if you need it good enough you don't even use the plates you just take the whole piece and take it off I can without poking a hole to the bottom, otherwise I ruin my pot. To give me some space between the two points so I can now pinch the walls and actually bring up the shape. Just like before, just like with holding your hands steady, using your elbows on your knees to brace yourself, same thing, if you take a finger, if you take a thumb, if you feel the area here, you can feel where it feels about center. You can feel where you can feel, especially in this kind of clay because it's more sandier, you can feel where that spinning point is. That's where you want to go down. That's where you want to depress into the body. And again, I'm bracing every app. I like to use my finger. Some people like to use their thumbs. Even though I'm going to use my finger, I'm not just going to be like, woohoo! I'm going to like, I'm holding onto my whole hand. I'm guiding as I go down. First 
use this finger when you go to the side. Again, notice how I, I, I'm always constantly bracing elements. I'm using my thumbs and my hands to keep everything tight and connected. I'm trying to do like loose hands like this, right? And there's just too much wobble. I just don't have that kind of like upper body strength. Most people don't. So use shortcuts, right? Brace yourself. You'll see like you got a pool of water because you've been opening it up and you're putting your hands in there. You know, take your sponge, sop it up, see what you got, see what your floor is looking like. I got a little dimple in the middle. It kind of ridges up and then kind of back down like I was talking about. So I'm going to use my finger and I'm going to try to smooth it out. Even up my bottom. Here's the reason why you do this. It's very rarely you're going to get a chance to do anything down here when you start bringing the stuff up, right? Because if, if my pot's this tall and I gotta make a fix down here, like I'm putting my arm like this, I'm trying to right? If you're gonna fix something right now, do it right now. Get this nice, then bring your clay up. Then you can just be like, I'm good down there, I don't gotta worry about it anymore. Visual is not the most flattering, but it's probably the best way I can explain it. I have a little bit of a gut, right? A little bit of a gut. I like my food. It kind of sticks out, kind of sticks out above my waist. Think of the pot as a gut. Here's the back. Here's the gut. When you're throwing, it's as if the clay is going around. You want to get, whether it's just a bare hand, whether it's whether you keep a wet sponge on the outside, you want to get underneath the clay and then holding your hand steady, pull everything up in not one nice slow motion. You want to get this to become height. You want, and you can even see it like there's even a dip right here, right? It's sticking out. This clay's thick. I want to get underneath there. I might even want to go so far as to push more at the base because right now my wall is that thick. That's too thick. I want to get under even more. Get underneath the clay and bring it up. Too often than not, people just kind of like start midway and just try to go like this and they think they're going to get clay and they're not going to get height. You literally, you have to get your fingers underneath the material, underneath the clay, and then pull that clay up. Also, I don't need to go nowhere near as fast as I've been going. All those things I just did is probably the fastest you're ever gonna go. Now it's time for it to go a lot slower. Because not only does that give you more control, man, if this thing's spinning really fast and it gets out of shape, it's just gonna whip it out of shape even faster and faster and then your whole thing's gonna flop around and it'll be very sad. So I'm gonna do something like this. That's more than enough to do. Get it nice and wet again. Now again, there's two techniques. A lot of people when they start, because they're not used to keeping waters on their fingers and have to get their fingers wet, they'll get this really wet and then use a finger on the backside, middle finger, pointer finger, and use that as their pushing point because it stays wet. It's not a bad technique. I don't like how this gets things gritty and I've just you learned to just use just my hands for the most part throwing and tell them like you're getting near finishing it. So I just use my hands. I also like to be able to feel like how I was talking about getting underneath the clay. Now you'll notice when I put my hands in here, I'm not just using my finger like this. I'm using the whole wall of my finger to brace the inside, right? My hope is I keep it this width and I just go straight up. So for me, almost like using how a rib, if I was holding a rib in there, I'm using the length of my finger as my rib. I've seen people do like with this hand, like pull up a thing like this, and like whatever, this is longer for you, right? Whatever you need. There's no like specific do it this way or you're not doing it right. I also don't want to go too aggressive. If I make this too thin down here and it's too heavy on top, all that weight's going to smush it. It's not going to look good. So it does take a couple passes. <laughs> 
Now, they, for, again, for some reason inherently in the way that it works, more often than not, when you start to pull, it does this. I still have that problem, just it does this. It's a really easy way to fix it though. Before you get too thin, get the outside wet, both hands, make sure you're not digging in with these fingers. Bring the shape back up. In fact, they talk about, and I think you can see it in some of the demos up there, almost throwing like a volcano, almost throwing like this is better at first because you can always open out, but at a certain point, if you go too far out, you can't bring it back in. came over here and took a spot and looked at this, the video can come over here if you want. Because I've been shrinking it, because it's gotten wide and I've had to bring it in and gotten wide and bring it in, see how there's like ripples here? It's uneven. I've actually made my top not centered. Like this is wobbly a little bit. This is some thicker, right? That's not good. Nobody likes that. You can either try to even it out up here but even if I do this, there might be some inconsistencies. So let's say there's like a wobble in here and I don't like it. Remember I told you about this mistake tool? Mistakes usually show up up here once you've gotten the opening. Let's say I don't like this, it's uneven. It's a little weird shape. I hold this on the side that it's going around very delicately. I cut off what I don't like. Maybe one side was floppier than the other side. I've lost some clay, right? So like, it won't be able to be as tall as maybe it could have been, but I didn't take much off of it. And I'm still able to kind of like do things and tweak the parts that I have left. So these are some of the ways that you kind of fudge stuff. A lot of this is just trial and error, honestly. It's throwing a handful of these and like having them all really suck and be upset, but that's okay because you just do it over and over and over again. Let's see if I can get a good shape out of this. I want to make kind of a nice, hefty looking like, pitcher, maybe something for like milk in the morning or like pancake batter. I'm going to use this. This is one of my favorite tools. It's called like a kidney rib. This one's stainless and it's thin so I can flex it. It's really nice. You might be able to find other things ribs that you'll have like this. This one's a little more flexible too, but it's rubber. Same thing, but this one's much stiffer. I like this for bowls. If I'm making a bowl, I can like get it started and then. But I'm gonna use this and you're gonna watch that not only will this hold my shape as I try to like create this belly for my pitcher, because it's the sharp metal and I'm holding it away, not towards, but away from the spin, it's going to clean up all the slop. It's going to look really nice and just almost like tight and almost like dry it off a little bit. Really heavy in the base here. And of course, 
course, look how much it took off. All that was just excess. But now, this is almost like dry to the touch. It feels nice and smooth. Let's see if I can get more curve on this. As with all things, how far do you go? Whenever you're throwing on the wheel, there's almost like a like a hidden time limit, depending on how much you've messed with it, how wet it's gotten, how much you've manipulated, how thin it's gotten. Can I keep going? In my mind, I'm saying, what if I brought this in and made like a nice thin neck? Wouldn't that look great? And the other part of me is saying, don't do it. You're gonna mess with this thing. It's gonna get too loose. It's gonna fall apart. Figure out what it is right now. I don't know, what should we do? Should we call it or should we try to go for the neck? Go for the neck? We yeah, obviously go for the neck. Guess what happens? If it ruins, just wedge it and do it again. Nothing's, nothing gained. Nothing, what has that go? Yes, thank you. Oh, there's a wild one on this side. All right, let's see what we can do here. <laughs> Stuff's wet. Yes, and I kind of like because I find that the little points here always like mess up my stuff if I try to use like the straight side. Oof. Good. We've got a little bit of a something up here. Another thing too, the wetter your clay, the easier it is to manipulate, but the faster it gets weak. The stiffer the clay, the more it's going to be able to hold up its shape, the harder it's going to be to center, the harder it's going to be to kind of get it started. Usually the stuff that's coming out of the bag is probably like a good like middle ground if you're using like directly out of the majority of the bag. But if you're using your own mixed stuff, kind of play with what you want. I think we're going to have to turn this 
in our picture. That's kind of the idea of it. Kind of stuff. All right, let's say I want to say, okay, this is done. A lot of this stuff that looks rough on top, you can always trim, you can always re-smooth, and then it's harder. Big, stout pitcher. But I still want to cut it off the bat. So, I want to give myself a nice base. did that. I'm going to get my wire underneath it nicely. And you don't want to wait to do your wiring like when it's dry and it's off. You want to actually do it now so that way you've already kind of made that separation so when it does dry nice on the back you're able to just kind of like peel it off and it just comes off. And this you do real slow. You don't gotta go real fast at all. I usually like to hold one side steady and push the other side through. It has these handles, but I always use thumbs to push it as low as I possibly can. I want it to be scraping against the back before I cut. So like I'll hold this steady and I'll draw this through. The best thing about clay is, yeah, you can just do it all over again. You just mash it up and start over. Start over. Start over. 